You've probably seen a couple of my videos explaining my Essential 5 language therapy framework that I have used to boost language comprehension and expression in my students, and that I've also taught to hundreds of other SLPs and helped them do the same. Usually at this point, people have a couple questions about applying the framework to their caseload, so I wanted to take a couple minutes and answer some of those for you. Now, one of the most common questions that I get is, how do you apply this framework and figure out how to write goals? And how do you handle evaluations and data collection? So I wanted to take a couple of minutes and talk about both of those questions. Since the techniques I teach you are simply a different strategy to achieve the same end goal that you're probably already working towards, such as better processing, better comprehension, better academic performance, there's really no need to rewrite any language therapy goals before implementing the strategies that I teach in Language Therapy Advanced Foundations. You can simply start doing them and just tweak your language goals over time as IEPs and evaluations come due. In Language Therapy Advanced Foundations, I provide you with a manual called the SPOT Framework Guide, where I walk you through how to write goals, how to collect data, and track progress, and how to use various data sources to make decisions, like classroom assessments, work samples, and standardized language assessments. I show you how to gather information from the things you already have, rather than requiring you to start from scratch and having to reevaluate each student. So the question is, how do I handle evaluations and writing goals? Well, you can simply just implement the framework and use the process that I lay out as those IEPs come due. Another common question is, does the Essential 5 framework address verb tenses, parts of speech, pronouns, antonyms, synonyms, and categorization, and list a couple other language skills that commonly come up? Do I address all of these things in a systematic hierarchy? When you use the Essential 5 framework, you'll focus on the highest priority skills that have the biggest impact on overall language processing. The truth is not all language skills need to be targeted directly or deserve to have a goal devoted to them. This is a good thing because you wouldn't have time to address all of these things anyways. Working on something like pronouns doesn't have an, a huge impact on comprehension and overall expression, so I don't recommend targeting pronouns as an attempt to improve language processing. I know there are other conversations to have here about pronouns, such as clarifying the pronouns people use to address themselves. But other than that, you don't need to have a dedicated pronouns goal on the language IEP. Instead, what we want to do is focus on high priority skills, such as those that enable people to expand their use of different sentence types, because doing this has an impact on overall comprehension, which increases the chance that they'll be able to read complex texts or compose longer written essays. Both of these things will give kids more experience using language, which increases language growth over time. Other skills like antonyms, parts of speech, categorization, verb tense, pronouns, are relevant to address, but we want to do it in the context of other more important skills. And I show you how to do that in Language Therapy Advanced Foundations. One question that I get is, how does the Essential 5 framework that you teach in Language Therapy Advanced Foundations compare to strategies in other literacy programs or memberships for SLPs? A lot of other programs and materials out there for SLPs provide strategies for discrete language skills. For example, you'll find a lot of worksheets and flashcards focused on things like categories, verb tenses, or even WH questions. There are even some that focus on thematic units and vocabulary. All of these things are fine, but SLPs often experience information overload. There are so many different options as far as materials and activities that figuring out how to sequence them together into a good system takes a lot of time. I experienced this frustration firsthand when I started out as an SLP. The Essential 5 framework, on the other hand, does not require you to sift through a ton of different materials and activities. Instead, it helps you laser focus on just a few simple techniques which minimizes the time it takes you to plan your sessions. You can implement it effectively with just a dry erase board, markers, and some simple word lists once you get good at utilizing the core strategies. 
The main difference with this framework is that it is a system instead of discrete strategies. When it comes to some of the structured literacy curriculums out there, the Essential Five would definitely fall in line with some of the principles in those programs, and using it in conjunction with one of those programs would be complementary. But the Essential Five is not the same as a lot of literacy programs out there because it covers how to do word study from the SLP's perspective, incorporating phonology, orthography, morphology, semantics, and syntax. A lot of programs out there are more geared towards teachers and reading specialists who have sessions every day with kids, while a lot of SLPs might only see their students once a week, which makes those other curriculums hard for SLPs to implement. On the other hand, the Essential 5 framework is feasible for SLPs even with one session per week. And you can customize it for more frequent sessions as well. So it's much more flexible and feasible for SLPs in the real world. Now, if you found this video helpful so far and you want to learn how to apply the entire Essential 5 framework for language therapy to your practice, then I invite you to check out my entire presentation where I outline the research behind this system, why it works, and the key components that you need in order to start creating your system. So on this presentation, I'm going to cover the one area that you need to focus on that really forms the basis for your framework, as well as those components that fit under it that are going to inform what strategies that you use in your treatment. And then I'll also talk about some common mistakes that SLPs make when planning language therapy and how you can avoid making them. So it's going to be possible for you to get better results by focusing on fewer things that give you the biggest bang for your buck in therapy and help you to create consistent change in your students' performance without requiring hours of prep and planning on your part. So all you need to do to check out that presentation is go to drkarenspeech.com backslash language therapy. Again, that's drkarenspeech.com backslash language therapy to check out that free online presentation.